Hey guys, what's up? Uh, it's Matt here. I thought I'd take everyone through just all of the cards that are in Blood Rage Digital. Um, if you have played the board game before, as I'm sure many of you will, um, or if you didn't know, Blood Rage Digital is based off of uh, Simon's miniature game Blood Rage, uh, designed by Eric Lang. Um, it's one of my favorite games board games and it's uh insanely fun uh, and so i was very excited to back it on kickstarter for um the digital version and because i did we've had access to this beta and we've been playing through it testing it out breaking the game finding some bugs and overall just having fun now um if we come over through here to the compendium here's where we can see all the cards now the cards are exactly the same as they are in the physical game. Um, I'll just go through them all with you and kind of explain my thought processes and how I rank them or would draft them. Um, just for uh, for science, you know, <laughs> purely for science. All right. So first up in the first age, Loki's Trickery. This is one of my favorite cards and it is. It is one of the top cards. It's a top tier card, and if it is in your first hand of draft, uh, and you're comfortable with purposely losing battles, you need to take this card. Uh, it is a battle card. It is only played in battles, and um, it gives you plus zero strength. Funny that. So you are going to be losing battles while you play this, or you should be aiming to, because, as you can see in the flavor text, if you lose steal one rage from the winning player now that is insanely strong because rage is our resource pool it's our engine it's how we take actions invading costs rage migrating costs rage um summoning your monsters uh doing your upgrades everything costs rage and at the start of the game we only start with six rage so that's pretty much gonna be on average probably four actions for people because things can cost multiple rage i.e your ship costs two rage to play the troll monster costs two rage to play um so i'd say like people usually take about four turns or have about four actions in the first round if you take loki's trickery and you're able to steal rage from people it is taking away a potential action from them and giving yourself an potential extra action or an extra warrior that costs one rage to place onto the map so it is insanely strong especially if you can use it more than once in that first round and get a few actions ahead of everyone and then at the end because when you lose the battle or it's a draw you keep your cards so when you're losing the battle you get this card back in your hand so you can play it again in the next battle lose it again so on so forth um, yeah, very strong card, and you see here, if there are four or more players in the game, there are going to be two copies of this in the draft. I love taking this card into the second round as well, and in the second round, your strategy may change up. You may change things up. You may um, decide, hey, I actually want to win some battles, win some pillages, get some stuff, um, and that's okay. It's still a very strong card to take into that second round in case you are going to lose a battle or you are going to keep continually purposefully losing battles to keep your engine going and to steal and leech from the other players. Very strong, high S tier. It, for me, it's a must pick if it's in my hand and there's only, only one card in the first stage that I think is stronger than this. That's pretty bold. Um, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, there's only one card in the first stage draft that I think is stronger than this card. Anyway, moving on. Thor's Hammer. It's a battle card, plus one strength, gain three glory if you win a battle with this. Um, this is a trash card. Well, maybe that's a little harsh. It, it's not trash, but this is, I would never pick this card intentionally. If it was like, only if it was like my last option or like the last three options I had they were all 
of the same tier. Like this is a this is a D tier card in my opinion. Like this is a never pick this. You only get it if you're forced into it. Plus one strength in a battle is. I mean that's hardly better than plus zero strength. That's pretty weak. It's not very helpful uh, if you're trying to win that battle. And then you have to win that battle to get the flavor text bonus, the three glory to win that battle. And then, yeah, with a plus one <laughs> battle card, you ain't winning that battle. Unless you have, like, some bonus Heimdall cards, but they don't come out into the second age, so that that doesn't even matter. And gain three glory if you win a battle. Ugh, that is so... That is, so average um three glory in the grand scheme of this game is is nothing like your scores in blood rage i'm gonna say should be at 100 or over they should be uh yeah i'd say buffer between 90 and 110 that's a good score uh and it's common that you would go over that uh, so three glory in the grand scheme of things is nothing um and in the first stage, your aim should not be even to be trying to generate glory. You're trying to up your clan stats, up your rage, increase your yeah, increase your stats, and get dudes on the board in strategic positions. You'll notice here that in a five or more player game, yeah, in a five player game, there'll be a second one of these in the draft. Jeez, it took a long time on that one. Uh, <laughs> sorry, boys. Odin Smite. Plus one strength, this is another battle card. Plus one strength, destroy one warrior from each opponent in this province before comparing strength. Uh, this is this is an average card. This isn't bad, but it isn't good either. So how you would use this is if, um, say you were in a province that only had uh, four, four spaces for warriors, and you had... Uh, a warrior in there and your opponents each had one warrior in there uh, you would use this and it would destroy one of their warriors so if they only had one warrior it would destroy it taking them out of the battle um, it would also give you plus one strength so it can be useful in that sense but most of the time uh, I would not choose to pick this card there's a better version of something similar, but we'll come up to that soon. Okay, in a three or more player game, there's going to be a second one of these cards in the draft. Moving on, Tears Bash. This is plus two in, in combat. Um, a battle card. This is an average card. Um, again, it's not bad, it's not good. I wouldn't choose to pick this unless I was going hard out battle strats. I want to win every battle being as many battles as I can and even then it would be on my lower end of preferences um yeah it's average maybe yeah average moving on Frigga's Grace another battle card plus two strength in the battle and if you pillage successfully raise another one of your clans that's by one this is potentially a very strong card especially in this first act because every clan stat that you get to raise in this first act has a huge impact on the rest of the game um i would say though that it is on the rare occasion that you would be able to use this card and uh for th and win a battle so um in that case i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna say this is an average card and i would not be trying to pick this if it was between this and Tears Bass or Odin Smite, I'd definitely pick this. Um, but yeah. Uh, are we doing a tier list ranking? Uh, maybe I'll do that in a different video. But yeah, this would be a... Uh, this would be a B tier. A strong B. And again, in a four or more player game, there's going to be another one of these in the draft. Alright, moving on to our stronger battle cards we've got tier smash plus three to strength in a battle you're going to get another one of these in the draft in a three or more player game and another one in a five player game uh this is an average card um again there are stronger battle cards than it and there are weaker battle cards than it this is actually probably dead in the 
dead in the middle. I would probably not go out of my way to pick this. Moving on. Tears Crush. So Tears Crush only comes in in a four player or more game. And it's plus four in battle. This is a strong card. It is probably the fourth. Yeah, it is the fourth best battle card of the first age. Uh, in front of it, I would put what's coming up next, Heim uh, Heimdall's Sight, Tears Smite, and then I would also put uh, Loki's Trickery ahead of it as being a better battle card as well. But plus four strength, there's only going to be one of them in the draft uh, if you're in a four or more player game. Yeah, this is, it's good. This is a good card. Tears Smite. Uh, this is a great card. This is a first round pick card. Uh, unless you have Loki's, in which case then you're at a moral conundrum. You need to decide, hey, do I want to go out and win at least a guaranteed win big battle here with Tears Smite? Or do I want to... Uh, in increase my e engine and leech off people's rage so I can take more actions with Loki's. I personally rank Loki's higher just because I like to be building my engine. I don't care about winning too many battles in this first age. Um, it's all, all obviously nice to get a few pillages and upgrade those clan stats, but that's not my entire focus. Um, but this is a great card. This is definitely a first round pick unless you have Loki's or a specific clan upgrade that we will come across again in a five player game another one of these tier smites is going to come out so in a four or less player game there's only going to be one of these so to nab it up as a deny pick is also very strong all right lastly for the battle cards we have heimdall's sight uh this card is plus zero to strength initially but let's read the flavor text this card has the same value as the highest revealed enemy card so this is a good counter to old uh, tears smite and tears crush here um this is a good card uh it's usually gets uh taken in that first draft so if you don't see it come through it's yeah it's going to be people's first picks this is up there this is definitely a a tier card um, yeah, it's great for equalizing, leveling the play playing field in the battle, and um, yeah, that's all, all I have to say, really. All right, moving on to our leader cards. Lord of Hammers is a leader upgrade, so this costs you three rage to do, and then your leader gets, um, you know, your leader invades for free. So you summon your leader onto a board for free. This just permanently upgrades your leader. Three rage is way too expensive to be spending on a card in the first age. It's, yeah, it's not good. And then we'll read the flavor text. If you successfully pillage with your leader, you may move him to an adjacent province. I mean, it's, that's not a bad action, but it takes into account that you are going to need to successfully pillage with that leader. And for three rage in the first age, that is literally half your rage. Uh, this is a, yeah, this is, I would never pick this card willingly. And if I did, I wouldn't play it. I'd just, it would just rot away in my hand. I'd maybe play it in a battle, trying to get rid of it. <laughs> um, if it's a five or more player game, there's going to be another one of these. All right, moving on to our warrior upgrade for the first age, Brothers in Arms. Um... This is a warrior upgrade, so it will go in your warrior upgrade space and permanently upgrade your warriors for the rest of the game. In particular, this is going to make each pair of your warriors in a province have a total of three strength. So if you have two warriors in a province, they're worth three strength instead of two. Um, this is decent. This is an okay card. I It's definitely not a first round pick. But it's good to, um, it, it, it's not a bad card. Again, in a five or a five player game, there's going to be a second of this. Moving on to our ship upgrades. Loki's dragons gain full glory when a ship of yours is destroyed. This is, uh, is decent. 
Uh, however, it costs you two rage to play this, and then it costs you two rage to invade with your ship. And you're going to do that, what? So you can place your ship probably in the area that's going to get Ragnarok. So you get the glory for the Ragnarok and an extra four glory for your ship dying to this. It's... I, I would put this in a lower tier of cards. This is not great. There are much better versions of this coming in age two and age three. Um, yeah, I would never personally want to choose this card. And again, in a five player game, there's going to be a second version of this. Moving on to clan upgrades. Now, there are some pretty freaking good clan upgrades in this first age. Starting off with Frigga's Charm. It costs zero. And the upgrade cost cards that you play for the rest of the game cost you one less rage. That is great. That's a great card. That's a high value card. I would... I might even rank that as S tier. If not, it's very strong A tier. And potentially a first round pick if you don't see... Um, if you don't see two specific other cards one of them being Loki's Trickery and the other coming up. Um, yeah, Frigga's Charm, very strong card, very good pick. I will actively look out for this card because especially if I have managed to pick up other upgrade cards. Oh yeah, so this affects all of your upgrade cards. So your ship upgrades, your leader upgrades, your warrior upgrades, your clan upgrades, and your monster upgrades. It's it's great. You're going to save so much rage over the course of the rest of the game with this card. Moving on. In a three or more player game, you're going to have Tears Domain. After you reveal a quest card in combat, you may treat it as a plus three battle card. That's not bad. If you're... If you ne if, it's only good to pick up, really, if you missed all the battle cards in the drafting and you picked up a bunch of quests, like... Other than that, it's pretty useless. It's definitely going to be built over as we go through the ages because it's not that strong and there are even better versions of it each different age as we upgrade. So uh, I'd rank that very lowly. I'd almost never pick up Tears to Main, but it does have a situational use. All right, Loki's Blessing. This is an awesome card, especially if you're going Loki strats, die to win, you know, Let's feed Valhalla with the corpses of our men. Uh, Loki's Blessing costs one rage. It's only available in four or more player games. Uh, if you lose a battle, you may invade that province with a warrior for free. So this is unbelievably awesome with uh, the Loki intentionally dying strat. You just throw yourself into every battle, intentionally lose, play your Loki's trickery, steal some rage from them, and you lost, your guys died, and you instantly get to uh and put one of your warriors f for free into that province that you just lost in so they're there for the next stage or they're there to be able to be migrated around moved around marched around uh it's great um the only thing you have to watch out for is running out of warriors because we only have eight warriors to use i do love this card i do look out for this card i try to get this card especially if I've managed to pick up Loki's Trickery. It's a great combination. This is a high card, strong, strong A tier card right here. Loki's Domain. Gain one glory for each figure you release from Valhalla. It's all right. I, it gets better with, there are upgrades for it into the other ages, in which case I almost never pick this up in the first game. One glory for each figure you release from Valhalla. Uh, it's not very strong at all. Um, but it's not completely worthless. So it's an okay card. All right, Frigga's Sukur or Sukur um, is only available in three or more player games. This is this, yeah, this is probably tied with this as the strongest card in this first age draft i love this card it's great everyone if it's in your first lineup of cards to draft you are taking that card even if you didn't necessarily want it you're taking it to deny everyone else because it is so strong 
All right, let's look at the flavor text. When you invade with any figure, you may invade with an additional warrior in that province for free. So that means you can fill up provinces very fast. You can, every time you invade with someone, you can put one of your warriors in for free. And in the first round where you only have six rage, so that's, excuse me, six potential warrior invades. Uh, that is uh, insanely strong. Uh, in fact, in, I think in one of my recent videos, yeah, I got Frigga's uh, Sukior and Loki's Blessing at the same time, and they comboed. So whenever I would invade with a figure, I'd get to move Warrior in for free, and whenever I would lose a battle, guys would die, I would get to invade with two Warriors for free. So I, I actually started running out of dudes very quickly because... Uh, of the insane invading abilities of those. This is a great card. This is a high, this is, yeah, S tier, on par with Loki's Trickery. You definitely want to be drafting this. All right, lastly, for the clan upgrades, we've got Thor's Glory. Cost two rage, gain two glory whenever at least two enemy figures are destroyed in a battle you participate in. Uh, this is trash really for the first age is two glory whenever at least two enemy figures are destroyed there yeah it's not um it's not great at all i would never intentionally choose this card uh i've never seen it be used to an effect that is at all game changing out of all the clan upgrades this is definitely the weakest all right, onto the monster upgrades for the first first age. We've got our dwarf chieftain. Um, I think I explained in one of one of my playthrough commentaries that um, I really like this card. It's not the best. Uh, it's not an S tier. It's it wouldn't be my first pick in the draft, but it would definitely be a solid second second choice. Um, it's a two strength monster that invades. And upgrades for free so it's pretty much summoning a two strength guy into a province that you want and if you get him killed off if you're playing with loki strats um, or he happens to die in a combat in the next age and the age after that you can invade with him for free so it's just a a, a good value unit um, especially in this first age when we have such little rage and so little turns he's like a free turn and is two strength so stronger than a basic uh warrior um i do like him he's definitely a solid second pick the troll it's two strength when this monster invades a province destroy all enemy warriors within it this is a decent card um it would never be my first pick and it would rarely be my second pick but if i go through a draft and i get dwarf chieftain and the troll i'm not mad it's great um the troll he costs two strengths i mean two rage so two rage out of your six you know that's pretty hefty but he can be a high impact unit because when you drop him into a province as you'll probably see in in people's playthroughs or like my commentaries uh he instantly destroys all enemy warriors in it so if there's a province with five spaces and they're all four filled up with other enemies warriors and you drop him in he kills them all instantly and now you're the strongest person in that uh that province and they've and the, your opponents have spent all that rage invading with those warriors uh and especially in the first turn they usually can't you know recuperate from that yeah he's a quality pick uh uh, definitely he'd be a strong third choice um yeah i probably wouldn't ever pick him as my second choice but definitely a strong third choice all right the sea serpent sea serpent's only available in three or more player game uh it counts as a ship you summon him into the water you may have seen them or played with him before he costs three strength i mean three rage and he is three strength so he's a slightly better ship um i out of all the games i've played of blood rage uh and this is the board game not necessarily blood rage digital which is uh i don't even know how many a lot um 
I think I have only picked up the Sea Serpent twice. And one of those times, I didn't even play him. Uh, I was, yeah, forced into it. Um, yeah, the Sea Serpent 3 Rage is half of the rage that you have in Age 1. It is ridiculous. It's um, way too expensive for what it is, in my honest opinion. Um, yeah, that yeah it's under no circumstances would i actually build that card unless i was going full out uh loki ship burning in which case it counts as a second ship to die to ragnarok so you get those extra glory points and then the extra glory points from uh, if we scroll up loki's dragon and that only gets stronger as the game goes on and you get higher upgrades for that Loki's thing anyway um so Mannerheim, Jotunheim, Alfheim quests are pretty self-explanatory uh glorious uh you know have the most strength in at least one of those provinces they're pretty easy to achieve unless Ragnarok well later in the game as Ragnarok takes out more areas then they get slightly harder but yeah they're pretty easy to achieve all you need to do is just fill up one of those areas have the most strength in it at the end of the game um, uh, and they give you five glory and if completed raise a choice of one of your clan stats which is very nice uh, you probably want to be choosing at least one quest in the first age it's harder to achieve two quests in the first stage just because you don't have that many actions so you don't have that many dudes so you can't be as widespread um more interesting quests uh glorious death have at least four figures in valhalla before ragnarok so that combos up great with loki strats of intentionally dying um yeah, there are multiple versions of this uh, in a four player game or a five player game yggdrasil I have the most strength in Yggdrasil. So this is probably the hardest quest in the first age because most people, you know, they bum rush Yggdrasil or they're trying to shove all their dudes onto Yggdrasil because they want those three clan upgrades. And fair call, that's like a decent strategy to do. Um, so this is, and but just because everyone's trying to do that or, or it looks like they're trying to do that, um, this becomes harder to do because everyone's shoving all their strength pumping it into yggdrasil uh widespread have the most strength in at least two different provinces uh this is i mean this is only available in a five or greater player game uh this is doable it's very doable however it's probably slightly easier than yggdrasil but definitely a little bit harder than doing these basic quests if you do not draft a quest in the first stage it is no biggie like they're not 100 percent necessary they don't give you the most glory at this stage like five glory six glory that's not very much in the grand scheme of things it's nice to go in to have at least one so that you can raise your clan stats usually spending it on rage so that you have a higher engine going into next uh, going into the next stage um yeah that's uh that's about it for age one shall we start with uh age two